and elsewhere. Psalm 84 verse 10, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of Yahweh Amen. than to dwell in the wick in the Amen. tents of the wicked. Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at that. Notice. The Olam Hazek cannot receive what Yeshua is talking about because it doesn't see him. Notice, that's relationship. It doesn't know him. Notice, that's relationship. He, they don't see him. They don't know him. What do they get from him? Common presence. Abyssal wind. Abyssal rain. Abyssal trees. Abyssal schnapps. Why is it an abyssal? To keep everything running in order so it doesn't get messed up. But they ain't going to get the deep stuff. They're not going to have their sins purged. They're not going to have their speech representing Yahweh. They're not going to, uh, to, to be able to say, Hineni, Abba, speak to, speak to me. I know you're with me. I know you're a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I know you'll never leave me or forsake me. They're not going to enter into that. They have the common presence that the that, that, that Talmudim have that relational presence. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Cell phones off, please. Thank you. No one's dying. That's okay. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Because it sees him not, neither knows him, notice, but you know him. You're in a, what? You have him in a relational presence. Look, he dwells with you in relational presence and will be in you. I get this all the time. Someone asked me, I've gotten this for 25 years. Rabbi, how do I know I'm saved? I'm not sure that I'm saved. You've heard me say this before. I'm, yeah, I said, you're not. So I, are you being very judgmental? I said, no, now you ask me a question, I'm answering. If you don't know you're pregnant, ladies, you either don't have a man or you have a bad situation on your hands. <laughs> you if somebody moves into your house and he's squatting in your house, in your bedroom, in your extra spare bedroom, and you don't know he's there, you have a serious problem. You're not, you have, you're, you're lacking, you're, you're being, you're dysfunctional. So when Yeshua has moved into our temples, our bodies, and created them, recreated them as temples of the Ruach HaKodesh, not only he lives, he lives inside of us, notice, he dwells inside of us and shall be in each one of us because he is in what? Relational presence. And because he's in relational presence, unlike the Olam Hazer, they cannot receive relational presence. Yeshua says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you after a little while. An orphan doesn't know who their mother and father is. Correct? A child of Yahweh knows who their, mother, who their father is, Yahweh, and knows who, knows who their mother is, the Ruach HaKodesh, the feminine face of Yahweh, and they know they are children of the Most High Elohim because the coal has purged their lips and Yahweh's holiness has purged their sins and they say, Hineni, 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 as a daily ongoing response to a loving Heavenly Father. Am I preaching good today? Oh, yes. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. It better be good. It's got to carry me for four services. That are by Yahweh. I said it better be good. Oh, yeah. Now, look at verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you after a little while. Really? A little while? Father, 2,000 years? Sorry, Yeshua. That's not a little while. In all due respect. But he doesn't mean come physically. He means I am coming to give you a what? A, a relational presence and it will happen shortly. How shortly? A couple days when I ascend back to the Father. You see? In a little while, you're going to enter into my relational presence. You won't be any orphans anymore. You won't just be limited to the common presence, but you will have entered into the deeper things of the relational presence. Look at verse 19. Yet a little while the Olam Hazel will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you shall live also. In that day you shall know that I am in my Abba, and you in me, and I in you. You have heard what I said, I go away, I come to you. If you love me, you would gila, you would rejoice. How? Because the world doesn't see me anymore, but in a little while, that's not the second coming, sweetheart. This has nothing to do with the second coming. When I go back to the Father, I'm going to enter into a relate. I'm going to send to you one of my faces. I'm going to send to you the Comforter that includes many... You're going to have access to all my faces because you're in a relationship presence with me. And you're going to have access to all my faces. And you, whatever face you need, I will be. I am that I am. That doesn't mean Jehovah God. I am that I am does not mean I was that I was when I was when I was younger and I was a little boy and I had long hair hair and a mustache. No, that means, what do you need, darling? Are you, are you in a relationship presence with me? I will be 
You need a husband? Until you find a good one, I'm going to be a husband. You need a wife? Before you find out, until you, I'm going to be. You're married and you're miserable? Don't worry. I'll be your best friend. I'll be whatever you want me to be. I will be what I will be to you. Whatever you need me to be, I'm going to be. And that's relational presence. He can relate to whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with, whatever challenges we have. It's a relational presence. He'll be in us. And we'll know that he's in us. That's how I can answer that. If a person has to ask me if they're saved, I know that Yeshua is not in them. So I can automatically, if you don't know that, that you're pregnant, sweetheart, uh, there, there are some serious issues going on. What woman doesn't know that she's pregnant after eight months? Maybe eight days, I understand. But not eight months. Can I hear a good amen? You have heard what I say to you. I go away, but don't worry. I'm coming back in a little while. And if you love me, you would rejoice because you'd understand I'm, I'm leaving you so that I can allow you open access through um, relationship, through that personal, personal relational presence that I'm leaving with you. I'm going to leave with you this relational presence. Go with me to Yohanan 1613. Yohanan 1613. Is anyone enjoying? Amen. Let's try that again. Is anyone enjoying? Amen. Amen. But when he noticed the Ruach of Emet, meaning if the Torah is Emet, but you don't have the Ruach of Emet, which is relational presence, you can never obey the Torah the way Yahweh wants you to obey the Torah because the starting point is also the ending point. What is the starting point? Oh, it's easy. Love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Excuse me, Yahweh. Love you more than myself? Yeah. That's the hardest part. Do your will. Even when I don't feel right. Even when I don't feel like doing your will. Even when there's a high cost of pain and confusion sometimes. Obeying you and suffering you. Yeah. Love me more than you love yourself. And if you're honest, Without giving me those holy self-righteous looks, most of us can't get first by past first base. <laughs> and I struggle with that also. We love ourselves more than Yahweh. Point blank, end of story. You can look at me, you can shake your head. All you want, that's the way we were designed. We're selfish by nature, and Yahweh has to change our nature to make it like his incorruptible, eternal nature that puts him before it puts ourselves. Amen. And that's a struggle. And here we are arguing what day Pesach begins. What time Pesach begins. Mm -hmm. And Colossians 2.16 clearly tells you how to deal with that. That's local minhag. One congregation begins Pesach Friday night. Another congregation begins Pesach Wednesday night. Who cares? If you're not in a relational presence with Yahweh, it's all bupkis. It's all a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And no one can judge you in regard to a, a Rosh Chodesh, a Shabbat, or a Moed, Except the local body of Yeshua and your local rabbi who sets the minhag, not the Bible, but tradition. So my, our minhag could be different than someone else's minhag. Every congregation has a different minhag. And Colossians 2.16 says, when you do these things, not if you do, we should not judge one another. The only one that's allowed to judge is the local body to whom that believer is submitted to and the minhag that they have established. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Now, where were we? 16, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yes? No? Maybe? 16, 13. But when he, the Ruach of Amen, has come, he will guide you into some Amen. No. Eventually, he'll guide you into all Amen. That's what relational presence does. Eventually, he will bring you to where you need to be if you stick with the program. He will never leave you or forsake you, but you do leave him and forsake him. Some of us weekly, some of us monthly, some of us daily, and that's when we get into trouble. Mm -hmm. We tell Yahweh what we're going to do and what we're not going to do, and then we wait for the results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we wonder why things are messed up. Exactly. We tell Yahweh how far we're going to go with this crazy stuff. Plural marriage, filter fish, matzo ball soup, you know, keeping feasts, you know, wearing tea. We tell Yahweh exactly how much we can handle and how far we can go, and we don't go any further. And then we wonder why we're hurting. We're wondering where the shalom God flew away. That Yonah, that, that shalom just, just flew away. It's not there anymore. 
because Wally was